we are ready for our next speaker. And we are ready for the compensators to join us at the innovation stage for some really, truly interesting stuff concerning oh, how computing power is helping us uh, fighting crime, right? We talked about this. It's a bit of a cliche to call it NCIS, but it's quite, quite kind of like the same. And Gina is really very knowledgeable on the topic. So, and if you want to join us in the speech about computer forensics, cyber forensics, digital firefighting, please join us at the innovation stage. There are only a couple of seats left. Yeah, that's how you, that's how you sell it. Um, more people coming over to the innovation stage to listen to our computer forensics talk about Gina. It's going to be fun and interesting. Are you ready, uh, Gina? Yes, I'm Shall ready. Shall I give you the floor? Yes, okay. thank you very much. Take it away. So welcome, everybody, to my presentation about cyber forensics. Uh, my name is Gina Duki, and uh, well, I will tell you all about our digital firefighting. So what am I going to tell you about? Well, different things, uh, digital forensics, as I mentioned, but also our incident response team. Uh, by the way, I work at Fox IT, um, and I will tell you in a minute uh, about myself. Um, I'm going to tell you about the investigations that we do at our company, uh, and something, of course, that this is the innovative stage, so I will tell you uh, about artificial intelligence in forensics and how we incorporate that into our research. Um, and last, I will tell you about e-discovery. So, who are we? So, I work at Fox IT. Fox IT is a, uh, well, um, a company that has uh, a lot of different departments, and one of the departments is the forensics department, which I work for. Um, well, this is a really stereotype, of course. I don't know, you all watch CSI or NCIS? Or have you ever watched it? Yes? Okay, We're, we do, don't do that. <laughs> We uh, sometimes, I describe it to my friends as that we do CSI type of work, but of course at, on TV it's a lot more spectacular, spectacular than we do. Um, but of course, yeah, we are the Sherlock Holmes and, uh, and we do, well, investigate, uh, yeah, really exciting invest yeah, uh, researches, which I will tell you more about later. So who am I? I'm a forensic IT expert. Uh, I'm also a trainer. I did a master in artificial intelligence and forensic science. Um, I also worked at our um, managed secure, yeah, well, our network department so that we uh, monitor our customers, our, the internet, well, the internet traffic of our customers we monitor uh, in order to see if they are being hacked. Um, so, uh, I'm also an intrusion analyst and an e-discovery consultant. Well, I will tell you later about that. So, what do I do? Well, I think this, this picture, I found it on the internet, so I didn't made it myself, but I think it's, uh, it, it's really funny because strangers do think that I'm kind of Rambo or something, but my friends think that I don't do a lot of work. So they think that, well, I'm sleeping all day. I don't know why. I, I think I gave the wrong impression. Um, but what I actually do is I have, well, we develop a lot of technical skills. And with that technical skills, we try to solve digital crime. So what do we do, like in uh, Fox IT, the company? We try to make the world a bit, well, safer. So we, we strive for a secure society on different levels. So at our forensics department, but also by monitoring uh, our customers for, well, to prevent them from being hacked. And we also have a, a, a penetration testing team, and they also uh, try to, well, hack the, our customers in order to find if they are vulnerable or not. 
So I will tell you more about our department, the forensics department, and uh, what kind of ser services we do, um, response services. So what type of inf investigation do we perform? Um, well, we have a lot of type of inf investigations like fraud or integrity, integrity investigations. Uh, think about, um, well, an employee who watches pornographic sites at work, that's an integrity issue, or uh, financial fraud. Um, but also, we can also perform in court, so if one of our customers have uh, well, an, uh, an incident and uh, we have to defend it in court, then we can also uh, well, wit uh, w perform as a witness, so as an expert witness, to, uh, yeah, to uh, interpret the evidence. Um, besides that, we also do uh, e-discovery. Does anybody know e-discovery or what it means? No? Okay. Well, that's, uh, that's, that's fine. It's uh, a lit lit to support litigators to um, review a large amount of documents. So uh, if a litigator has a case and they have to well, review a lot of documents. We have an e-discovery tool that we can load data in into so that they can review the documents automatically or, well, not automatically, but better. Um, well, and we also perform technical support. We have a forensics lab, but I will tell you more about that now. So at our company, we have a forensics lab, which is really cool, or, well, it's, it's really nice. We, it's just a lab ne next to our work environment. And in our lab, we perform all of our investigations. So you have to see, if, if, uh, if, um, if we perform an investigation, we first go to the client, we do an intake about what has happened, what do you, do you need from us to investigate, and then we get the digital evidence. Digital evidence can be uh, a laptop, uh, a, a smartphone, everything digital. Then we will receive it in our lab and we take it apart, well, take it apart, we take the hard drive uh, out of it and then forensically uh, make a copy in our lab. So, um, well, our lab is uh, built according to the international standards. And you have to think about something like uh, an online storage of, well, not this amount of storage that we have for our customers in total. So the data that we have in total from our customers. So again, uh, what type of investigations? We have computer assisted crime and computer targeted crime. So the difference is that Computer assisted crime is, well, as the name says it, crime who's assisted by the computer, like the fraud crime, fraud by employees, or integrity issues, or data leaking. And we also have a lot of computer targeted crime. So uh, think about um, attacks from criminals by malware, um, and yeah, a lot of hacking cases. So this is the kind of stuff that our incident response team uh, will pick up, so we'll try to investigate. So next to our forensics department, we have an incident response team. That means if a customer calls with, uh, I'm, I'm hacked, we're hacked, can you please come now? Then we have to turn out, uitdrukken in het Nederlands. We have to turn out with our gear and then immediately go to the customer which can be in the Netherlands or not in the Netherlands, uh, which is really funny because uh, in our company there, well, there are not a lot of girls, so, I, well, I'm most the only one. So there are a lot of men and, <laughs> and we also don't go to work like this. Well, I, I'm now, uh, n but most of the time I wear sneakers. But if we go to a customer, we have to, we go in suit and, well, just in, in a dress. So we all in the, in, at our company, we have like lockers with, with clothes. And if, an, if, if there's an incident, all the men are going to change in their suits. So that's uh, really funny. The first, 
I think the, in my first week, I saw my manager in a boxer short ironing uh, his shirt. <laughs> in his Batman suit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, well, and then we go to the customer to try and solve, um, well, what has happened. And um, the most important thing in incident response is to do damage control. Because of course, if you're hacked, uh, some systems are down or can be down or uh, uh, yeah, things like that. So the first, the first important thing is damage control. And then we are going to do forensics investigation about how it has happened that the company got hacked. Um, yeah, so we have to be, the, well, we have to be on call like 24 seven because anytime there could be an incident uh, that we have to go to. So what kind of skills and expertise, well, do you need if you're a forensic investigator or an incident response? Of course, the technical skills, that's the most important. Analytical skills, reporting skills, because no, re no investigator like this, but in each investigation, you need to write a report. Most, sometimes the report, this, takes more time than the investigation itself. So you have to need reporting skills. And well, I think the, well, uh, an important skill is the social one because you can do a lot of technical stuff and you're really good at it, but we have to also communicate with the client. We have to go to the client. We also work at the client's office most of the time. So I think a social skill is also important in this type of work. You also see really the difference in the, dif in the different apartments at Fox IT, because we also have a department crypto, so cryptographic, and those people do not have a lot of social skills, <laughs> and the forensic department do. <laughs> so what kind of technical skills? Um, well, to do host forensic, so on the digital device, you need a lot of technical skills uh, about Windows, uh, well, the different operating systems, the mobile devices, databases, well, et cetera, et cetera. Um, also, network forensics is really important because, um, well, you want to see what's it's, what is on the internet or what, what is, has happened. And that is, um, yeah, sorry, it's really, it's really loud over there, yeah. <laughs> Yeah? Oh, okay. Okay. Um, yeah, so network forensics um, uh, to see, uh, well, the network traffic. Log forensics, uh, I will come to later to that. And malware analysis, because we now see a lot of malware. Uh, we also have a special, well, maybe not team, but people who are skilled in reverse engineering malware. Uh, so that we can precisely know what a malware does. So one of my first cases, I think, uh, when I worked at Fox, I work at Fox four years now, uh, and one of the first cases was uh, this. These were magnetical optical drives. Yeah, this is really... <laughs> okay. I can also dance for you if you like that, but no. <laughs> um, so this is one of my first cases, the magnetical optical drives uh, from 1986. And this was a, a, a file system. It has a file system that we didn't know, the IRMX. And uh, there on the tapes were um, phone taps or deleted phone taps. And my job, or well, my uh, assignment was to re re reverse engineer this file system. So that was uh, one of my first ca cases. It didn't, I did it half of it, uh, but I didn't find all of the tapes uh, of all of the phone tabs back. But it was a really nice first case. Uh, this was one of my cases that um, I had to do a lot of SQL, well, database. Um, querying, querying a SQL database. It was a case about um, 
there were there was there was financial fraud being well there was financial fraud and they uh, declarations is that the right word in english declarations yeah is that good expenses okay well they did fraud with with to uh with yeah expenses yeah exactly um but in the sql database they also locked the ip address from where they entered the expenses um well it was interesting because we well tried to map the ip and a couple of those ip addresses were in the same were from a mcdonald's in the same place from where the where the comp company was located from the fraud but okay it was uh, it was a really nice case um yeah ransomware <laughs> we have a lot of ransomware cases or or people who call us about ransomware uh how to solve it or if we can do something about it does anybody uh, had ransomware before you you did you also did you also did okay what did you do oh you heard about it oh, okay but you had it oh, what, Sorry? Uh, a client of mine had it, and uh, we used a uh, tool from Casper Sky to um, find the, uh, the encryption keys. Yes. And then decrypt the files that were in encrypted. <laughs> so you could encrypt it? Uh, yeah, decrypted. we recovered uh, every single file. Oh, okay, without yeah. paying. Yeah, without pain. Okay, nice. We were lucky, I guess. Yeah, I Thanks. guess so. D does any, nice. everybody know, if doesn't, does, doesn't anyone know what ransomware is? Well, okay, it, it's malware that uh, hijacks your files uh, with means of encryption. And most of the time you have to pay the criminals to get the decryption key or the key to de decryption. So yeah, we get a lot of ransomware cases. Uh, I actually got one this Monday, yeah. And um, it's really hard because we cannot, we, well, we cannot, most of the time, we cannot uh, decrypt the files. Uh, but of course, we can research what the cause is from, well, what, what, the, what the ransomware was. Um, with this scenario, we get a lot of, well, a lot. We get crying people on the phone c calling us, I lost my data. And this was a, a woman, no, it wasn't her, of course, but it was a woman who cried and she, uh, she had ransomware and she backed up her files, but she, she, the, her backup, she entered or she put it in the system that was infected. So our backup folder was also encrypted. So uh, this is an advice, backup all your files. And uh, well, don't, well, it has to be separate from the system, of course, that is, uh, that has ransomware. All right, it was a French lady, right? Um, another interesting case uh, was about, well, also somebody who committed fraud internally. And this guy, or yeah, this someone, tried to, well, he, um, he, he tried to look up how to commit the fraud into Google. So if you want to know something, so, so he entered in Google from how do I do this, right, to commit the fraud. I cannot tell you, of course, what he exactly di di did. But in the internet history, I couldn't find anything. I couldn't find any traces of this fraud, and uh, I couldn't find anything at all. So I, he deleted the internet history. But what he didn't delete was the search words that Google saves next to the internet history. So your internet history is another database file from your search words. But your search words doesn't uh, save the time. But it does save the search words. So I could find the search words, what he looked up to commit the fraud. 
So that was a really good evidence into uh, this case. So, um, well, now to the most important part. If you have questions in the meantime, just ask. Yeah, but what did you do with the guy oh, who committed the fraud? <laughs> yeah, well, that's the thing. We don't do, uh, well, we, we write a report and it goes to our customer, uh, but the customer uh, can do or fire the guy if it has enough evidence or, uh, well, go to court to fire him, her. Right, yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, so now to the innovative part. So I studied artificial intelligence next to forensic science. Um, so I think it's also important to incorporate artificial intelligence into our investigations. This can be done uh, in a lot of ways. One of the ways is uh, pattern recognition. So you have to see, we have, we have to deal with a lot of data in most of our research, in most of our investigations. So for example, um, if we investigate log files, you can think about window event logs, um, well, every type of logs that is on your computer, it's a lot. And it has to take time for an investigator to see everything. So this is the type of investigation that AI can help you a lot. Um, also by visualizing these type of information. So a lot of data is for a, hu well, it's for, uh, for a, a human more, um, or better to interpret it if you visualize it than if it's just lines of code. So that's why AI can also help in that. Um, and lastly, yeah, e-discovery, predictive coding. I will come to that later. So this is an example of how we, uh, how we use artificial intelligence in our investigation. Um, we do a lot of compromise assessments. A compromise assessment is actually, um, we go to our customer for a month and we, we try and see if they are hacked in, in, the, in the past. And then we do some types of investigation, host forensics, on, so on computers, log forensics, and network forensics. So in log forensics, you have to investigate millions and millions lines of logs for the whole company. So uh, we use Splunk. Does anybody know Splunk? Splunk, yeah, okay. And in Splunk, you can make these type of graphics. Uh, it's just to visualize the amount of logs, um, yeah, so you can find a pattern in the logs. This is an example, the, the lowest one, this line is uh, our failed logins. So what can a failed login say, or a, a number of failed logins in an investigation? Maybe a brute force attack? That, that could mean this. So that, then you can see, then you can uh, try and zoom into this moment of field logins to investigate further. This is also really interesting. We developed this at Fox. Um, this is to find uh, anom an anomalous network traffic. So this is a, this is all the network traffic in, uh, from a client to all, uh, well, the, all the network traffic. And we try, okay, this is maybe a bit hard, but we try to f find outliers of the network traffic. So for example, um, if, um, if the CEO connects to the developers environment that's maybe an outlier because what does the CEO needs to do in a developer's environment that's you know that could be a sign of uh, well intrusion so that's what we try to find and solve with AI uh, well applications like this 
Okay, so this is what I built because I also did some AI at uh, Fox IT. Um, so what I try to do when I work at the networking department, so you have to mention we have a SOC, a security operation center. That means that uh, five students look at these six screens the whole day to, um, well, find intrusions at our customers. There are millions of alerts come into the SOC um, and they have to, well, they have to review the most important alerts. So what I try to do is to, well, I try to automate some of the process of reviewing these alerts. And uh, what I did is to build a clustering algorithm uh, that clusters the alerts that, well, has some kind of connection to each other. This means that a soccer, uh, 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 someone in a sock, can see faster if it is an intrusion or not. So this is a, an example of my clustering algorithm, uh, which, uh, well, is, is uh, classified into four clusters. So now the SOC gets to see four clusters of alerts instead of, uh, well, this was maybe 100 alerts, separate alerts. So, well, they use it still in our SOC, so uh, I think uh, it's really nice. And the next step is, of course, to try to automate the decision if it's really an intrusion or not. But that's, of course, for the future. Um, so e-discovery, um, this is the process in e-discovery. E-discovery is uh, the litigation support. So uh, if you have a large amount of documents, we support the litigators to review these documents. So if they have a huge case with uh, a million of documents, they, uh, well, we provide a tool in which they can easily review all of the documents. So they say, okay, this is important for the case and this document is not. In e-discovery, there's um, an AI process. And that's called predictive coding. This is really nice because predictive coding uh, allows you to learn from the, from the human reviewer in order to uh, autom automatically classify the rest of the documents. So for example, if you have 100,000 of documents, then you only have to review 10,000 of documents and the AI algorithm learns from it and then it will classify the other documents into if it's relevant for the case or not. So this is really interesting because it's really for, yeah, you have to imagine a litigator costs maybe even more than me, a forensic investigator. So if you need to, well, a customer needs to pay the litigator to review 100,000 documents manually one by one, it takes a lot of time. So predictive coding makes it much more faster and easier and maybe even better because humans can make mistakes I mean, if you look at two hours at these documents, then sometimes you probably will, well, well maybe misclassify a document. So um, this is what predictive coding does in e-discovery. Um, so it's also an AI application into a forensic process, uh, which can make it, well, more easier and faster. Well, that was it, actually. So, are there any questions? Questions? I was wondering, do you also have a van when you go out with the squad team? Yeah, we did. Or you <laughs> did have a van. So the image of the A yeah. team was actually accurate. We had a That's we great. had an old ambulance. Wow. And is that a good word in English? Yeah, then yeah, it's I not all about PowerPoint. It is about a yeah. little bit about the A team. Yeah, exactly. Cool. Yeah, about the A team. Yeah. That's totally cool. So Question. Um, I wanted to ask you if you ha um, have you had a, a problem with 
fake identity in the internet. When fake? Yeah. When someone stole the identity of someone or something like that? Mm, yeah. I haven't had a case about that. No, actually. But uh, it would work in the, in the same way that you do the, uh, the other stuff. I mean. Uh, the, uh, to investigate yeah. such a research? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, yeah, I think so. But um, we also do uh, a lot of open source investigation. So on, on Facebook and that kind of stuff, we can also investigate. Yes. Yes. Identity theft. Yeah. Did it happen to you? Okay. <laughs> Luckily so. Yes. How do you did uh, to decrypt uh, a ransomware attack uh, without any help or uh, server keys and something? How do you did by your own? Maybe renting a server farm in the cloud or for making a brute force attack with some tool to break the, the decryption or how do you yeah. do that? How did you I'm very interested. I'm professional of IT and I, I work in that field. Okay, so it's so interesting. Okay, but you... You you think we did that or <laughs> how it is done? I heard you saying uh, um, that you you were able to to do that when you were talking to him. Or oh, okay, okay. No, actually, it, it's it's not something we do. So, if a customer calls us that they have ransomware, we can't really help them to de decrypt their files. And we also don't advise to, of course, pay the criminal because yeah, we're, f we're a forensic uh, bureau. So we, we, can't e we can't help by decrypting the files, no. But the, that person over there, he was able but to. But he was able to, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Of course you can try. You can collaborate. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> More questions? For Gina. Yeah? Okay. Which tool did you use to make that, uh, that presentation of the intrusion logs, that uh, conceptual map? Which tool? Uh, the, what I did? Yeah. I uh, used uh, Gaffey. That, that was in Gaffey. Mm -hmm. Do you know that? Uh, no. Oh, okay, I yeah. Know. And uh, I use R a lot to code. To code algorithms in R uh, and Python, MATLAB, mm -hmm. and this was visualizing in Gaffey. It's pretty nice. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, you should sell it as art. It's yeah, cool. yeah, yeah, it's art. Yeah, it's also dynamically. <laughs> moving art. Could, uh, yeah, yeah, moving yeah. art. Yeah. So, do you think that uh, your world is, is is your field of of, of um, work is growing? It's increasing. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's really increasing. Is your company evolving. increasing? Yeah. A lot, yeah. yeah. So in the beginning, I n knew almost everybody, but now uh, not anymore. They only know you, of course. They know me, of yeah, course. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Yes. Question in the back. Uh, if you had one tip about security, what would it be? Wow, that's a difficult question. One tip about security in general. Um, don't put everything online. <laughs> I well, think. Yeah. If I can specify it a little bit, I was wondering how you can prevent ransomware. Oh, as a, yeah. As, a, as an individual. Yeah, yeah so yeah, the, 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 the normal stuff. Don't click on anything you don't know. Uh, in your email or on whatever. Um, yeah, try to be careful about some people you don't know sending stuff. Don't click any attachments, op don't open it. Um, yeah, that kind of stuff. And uh, yeah, try to have a s really strong password. But yeah, that does all, all of the types of things I think everybody knows here. Yeah. Of, uh, at least I hope. <laughs> HTTPS. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Also of helps, course, yeah. 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 Okay. Also, if you hover over a link, you can see to where it leads. So before you click, hover on it. Um, yeah. 
Yeah. Does it help? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Working on the on the final solution where everything is safe. And yeah. Uh, but I mean, you know, if you're on the internet, yeah. you're never safe. That's true. It wasn't built to be safe. I just I learned today. Yeah. Okay. If you don't want to have malware, you don't. You, you're, you don't. You, yeah. You don't need use to use, it. or you don't have to use the internet. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Any more questions? Because one more question. Oh, I was. I thought I saw a a, a hand. Because then I'll go to the four final formal uh, conclusion of uh, of this presentation, which is your present. Oh. Yeah. Let me offer you the present. It's a small attention from the organization. Okay. They will allow you to join the Campuseros <laughs> in the Campuseros campsite. It's an actual tent. Oh, really? It's, it's only nice. one person or maybe two. Have you tried it with two? I don't know. Better not, right? Yeah, it's going to be hot. And so so, um, I see so people enjoy. laughing. Yeah, yeah, it's a small tent. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you can see it on the campsite. Okay. Okay. Thank, thank you so you. much for inspiring speech. And, yeah. um, well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.